Hey, welcome to another episode of Camp and Camera. Today we're at a special place. If you can see right behind us, there's a motor home, and right behind that is the Elkhart, Indiana RV Hall of Fame. It's a pretty cool place. Let's go check it out. The RV Hall of Fame is located in Elkhart, Indiana. This is where 80% of the travel trailers and RVs in the United States are manufactured. As a matter of fact, we passed by the Braxton Creek Bushwhacker Factory on the way to the museum. To navigate the museum, you follow the winding road. We expected to see many full-size RVs, but we were surprised to find several display cases with tiny models. And they even have a research library upstairs. All right, so we're here at the Elkhart RV Hall of Fame Museum. And the first camper when we see when we walk in the door happens to be a teardrop. That's how you get a museum tour going. And Joanne pointed out that it's got the straps. It's got the straps to keep the door from hitting the front of the camper like we put on ours. Well, we got that idea at a tearjerker's beat up um, at the Okani State Park, so it's cool to see this in the museum. This was a great example of a mid-40s kit teardrop. The far rear axle underneath the all-metal galley was very reminiscent of the era. So even though it looks a little different than a lot of the modern teardrops, it's still the same. You've got your galley in the back with a two burner cooktop and check out the propane tank. It looks a little different than we're used to, but it's still a propane tank. So it's cool to see that the teardrops built today still maintain the classic design of the old one. As a model builder myself, I was excited to see this tiny scale model of a travel trailer factory. The tour starts with a room of newer campers to show you what's out there, but the shining star is across the wall where the vintage campers begin. One such example was this 1913 Earl travel trailer. According to the sign, this was the first travel trailer in the world. It set the stage for many things to come. Now know what you're thinking, this actually looks like a hearse, but it is a 1916 Model T Ford, and they call it a telescoping apartment. How cool is that? Could this telescoping apartment be the world's first sliding camper? And of course, what kind of camper museum would you have if you didn't have an Airstream? And speaking of Airstreams, this is the world's smallest Airstream. It's the smallest one ever produced, and there was only one of it made. So if you want to see it, you got to come to the RV Museum to check it out. I can't even imagine putting a value on this thing. I know how much Airstreams go for. This has to be priceless. This Airstream wasn't much bigger than my teardrop. But even at 13 feet, it still had the amenities of home. All right, for you DIYers that watch the channel, this is a 1935 home-built travel trailer. This thing looks amazing. Can't believe it's 1935 is still in this good a condition. That is pretty darn cool. 1935 DIY project. Looks like it rolled out of a factory. Awesome build. This is a 1962 Mallard. It says that it was used and owned by the same family for 30 years. Now, 
1985 called. They want their camper back. So don't ask why, but I absolutely love this thing. <laughs> I didn't expect that. I absolutely love this thing. Something about the layout. <laughs> I don't know, this is like super cool. I could see me driving one of these down the road. So I didn't even know that Charles Lindbergh ever camped in a travel trailer. And here we are, Here, here's the second one I've seen this week. The first I saw at the Henry Ford Museum in Dearborn. And now here's a 1939 camper that was specially built for Charles Lindbergh. So evidently when the guy wasn't flying, he was camping. This is really cool. Charles Lindbergh was known as Lucky Lindy, but I don't think it was for flying across the Atlantic unharmed. I think it was for owning two really cool campers. As you'll notice, there's actually two axles on it, one on the front, one on the back. It's, it's not a motorhome, it's a travel trailer. Um, you pull behind a vehicle, and, and they said on the description, basically it just adds stability when you're camping overnight or parking overnight where you don't have to put jacks down. There's a place in the floor so that you can, it's a dip in the floor so you can stand up while you're cooking. Here is something that I never knew existed. I've heard of a Cerro Scotty travel trailer, but I've always thought of ones that were a little bit larger. Here's a 1957 Cerro Scotty teardrop. Didn't even know that was a thing. Let's check it out. I'll have to admit the tongue looked a bit flimsy, but the rest of the camper appeared to be built very well. Although modest by today's standards, the galley had room for groceries and a place to set a grill. And I've seen this feature on another camper the window frame tilts out from the top uh, or tilts out from the bottom is hinged at the top that's a real nice design especially if it's raining that ought to be something they ought to do in modern uh, campers and teardrops so this right here is something special this is a 1937 Hayes uh, camper the cool thing about this is its condition it was only used a few times before being put into storage a little before 1940 and it sat there until 1990 something so it sat there for 50 years and when they pulled it out i think they repainted it and pretty much everything else is original so this is almost a time capsule This is quite possibly the best example of this camper you'll ever see. Now that is what you call a barn find. And here it is, the 1967 Winnebago. Just ready for me to fill it with gas and take it on the road. Look at that dash. A 1960s apartment on wheels. Yep, if you're gonna have an RV museum, you have to have a Winnebago.
So I'm standing in the last camper that I'm going to show you, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. I want you to guess what this camper is. I'll give you a hint. It's 42 feet long. Um, that's all the hint I'm going to give you. Put in the description below what you think this camper is. So that was the Elkhart, Indiana RV Hall of Fame Museum. And I'll have to say that was pretty cool. Um, the exhibits were very high quality. It had a, had a couple campers in there that were very historic. If you're in the area, I'd certainly recommend, you know, stopping by. And I think it was pretty affordable, wasn't it? Yeah, it was $12 a piece. Okay, so yeah, I mean, yeah, a couple people stopped by, I mean, a little over lunch money, and you can see an RV museum. Stop by and see it, it's, it's really good. Um, you know, maybe one of these days the Camp Easy will be in there. I don't know. <laughs> so hey, make sure to support their um, their store. Also, the stuff is really reasonably priced to me. Yeah, it's a it's a nonprofit organization. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so there's no tax. Yeah, no tax. So yeah, that's a good thing. So hey, if you liked today's episode, I hope you did. Click that subscribe button. Click the like. And uh, until next time, take care. We'll see you on the road. If you're visiting Elkhart and you're going to go to the museum, um, definitely stop two miles down the road at the China Star Restaurant. Um, we had the family dinner special for two. It was only $19.95. Um, excellent food. It's the best Chinese we've had in a really long time.